cannabis, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Have a good time. That's all that matters, man. That is all that matters. Have a good time on a Friday night. Thank you so much for hanging out with me right here at the Justin McDonald Show, the No Politics Zone on TalkCast PDX. Thank you. Thank you so much. And don't forget to check out my new little short form podcast. I'm very excited about it. It's called The Quick Hit, and it is on Canacast420.com. It's a little uh, podcast I like to do with people in the cannabis industry. It's only four minutes and 20 seconds long. You get it. Yeah. Check it out. It's at Canacast420.com. Okay, shameless plug there for a new venture that I got going on. But thank you so much for hanging out with us on this Friday night. Time now, though. We're going to do our My Instagram interview. I got my good friend Jeremy Robbins with us. Let's do it. All right. I'd like to welcome on to the program tonight a good friend of mine. I haven't even seen you in a very long time. We've seen each other on social media and whatnot. But due to COVID, we have not seen each other probably in over a year. Probably closer to two. Is it close to two years? Holy yeah, crap. Yeah, man. That's yeah. a long time. But uh, Jeremy Robbins, thank you uh, for joining me tonight on the program. I appreciate it. Um, and you're up in Washington, correct? Uh, yeah, since uh, the, the whole pandemic thing has come around, I've pretty much settled up here um, close to the, the 205. Um, it's uh, me and my dad and my girlfriend and two poodles. So we, we have a lot of stuff going on. Um, that's been the big thing is that I became a full-time poodle dad. Yeah, um, and, I like that uh, though, poodle dad. Yeah, it, it's been great. It's been great. So we've Are you going to invent a, a, a cultivar called Poodle da- Dad? Poodle Dad. Hey, man. I may. I may. <laughs> Did um, I give it away to him? Haha. <laughs> I mean, any, anymore, it's, it seems like if it's not named after some sort of a candy or cake or um, sweet, it just is not going to be popular. Um, but it also kind of trips me out when I'm like, um, trying to pick something and it's just like what the hell is the blueberry shortcake um, oh, what is that <laughs> right right well right. we met each other in the cannabis industry i started working for organ finest around 2015 uh, right there towards the end uh, of uh, medical and uh, you and i met uh, through megan marchetti and a few other people that were there at that time uh, mm-hmm. organ finest still around uh, still great uh, selection everything that it's always been but um, we, you know, we went to a few events, we've done some stuff. We, you know, we're both, I think on the same page of stuff. Where do you think uh, the industry stands at right about now? I mean, where are we at? If somebody just like this, some normal person who doesn't pay any attention to the cannabis industry, let's say goes, Hey, Jeremy, what's going on in the, the cannabis world? Is it still medical or recreational? What, what is it? What's going on? Well, uh, yeah, that's a great question. So we definitely are living in the times of recre- recreation, um, uh, the state of Oregon grossed $1.1 billion last year um, in cannabis Just sales. Kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> lots of taxes. Um, you know, and, and so uh, it, it's challenging if you have medical issues to, to really get the things that you need to kind of uh, get yourself straight. Um, and um, yeah, we, we definitely also have challenges because so much uh, value is put on that dollar that, um, you know, medical patients are, are primarily low income, Mm -hmm. um, have a lot of needs. And so the, the old school way of taking care of, of, a you know, a number of patients, um, is definitely gone by the way. And, uh, it can, it can be really challenging. The, the good news is about recreation is the access is much easier than it's ever been. Oh my goodness. so, So much, you know, yeah, yeah. And even with the pandemic, I feel like it's gotten better um, mm-hmm. with the curb, curbside access, uh, being able to do online ordering and having them come out to your vehicle. I'll be honest, um, the curbside thing to me is amazing. Um, and, you know, even the delivery thing is cool, too. But, I, you know, if I'm just out and about running around, I happen to just say, oh, man, maybe I should, you know, check and see if there's a deal or something. And like, yeah, uh, example, last night I'm out doing my thing, doing a little grocery shopping. I get a little alert on my phone that there's a deal nearby. Take a look. I go buy some uh, stuff I've never tried before and, and it's on sale. 
21 bucks, I think. I'm in there about five minutes. It felt like my old dealer's house back in the day. I mean, yeah. You didn't want well, you sitting around there, right? You in and out. Right, 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 right. In and out, in and out. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, it does It, it does kind of harken back to that. And um, I, I honestly don't think it's going to go away. I don't think that there have been um, really any issues. Like, um, you know, at first there was all this concern about safety and um, security and all this nonsense, basically. And um, I think it's worked out pretty well. So um, hopefully... It, it will continue to, to be an option. I know for, for me, especially in a wheelchair, um, mm. having to unload and load and that sort yeah. of stuff, it's just, it's just way, way, way um, more straightforward. And there's um, some parking lots that aren't so friendly. No, no. Um, I mean, I can think I of would, a couple right off the top of my head. I'm just like, hmm. I would say the majority of them are not friendly. <laughs> and so it, you know, it, it really has um, been, a, been a boon and, um, you know, the other thing that I really see is this is um, a time of consolidation in the cannabis industry. And so you had a lot of independent um, producers and processors, and that's kind of going away. And there, there seems to be more big players that are coming out mm -hmm. and owning a lot of, of different types of farms and different types of retail locations. Um, but, but basically, you know, the big money is able to uh, sustain and continue um, uh, you know, the, this industry. And, and yeah. it was a dream for a lot of, of, you know, mom and pop folks to open up a, a spot, but, you know, it's like any business. And right now uh, with the pandemic and with, um, you know, all the other issues, I think it's really challenging. And so I've seen a lot of um, consolidation shops that have been sold to, you know, pretty large yeah. um, conglomerates. Um, I've, I've noticed that trend a little bit too on the business side of things. Mm -hmm. um, it seems definitely to me you have like uh, your supermarket with uh, all your farmers and everybody, all the farmers are selling to the supermarket, which is good. Uh, but sometimes that supermarket's owned by somebody who's sitting on a yacht somewhere, uh, you know, which is, I'm, I'm all for it. Okay. Providing jobs, doing your thing, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, spread it around a little bit more uh, and make for a better environment for working conditions and livable things and all that stuff. Um, but I think the industry is going in the, in the right direction. I think with the new administration in the White House, you're probably going to see banking and things like that going to be a real big thing here pretty quick. And um, I think we'll really see the advancement of this industry. So, yeah, I, I, I hope so. It's um, you know, that continues at all levels of um of business that continues, I think, to be the biggest barrier is just like, um, mm. how, how do I pay my bills? How do mm -hmm. I, you know, do a payroll? How do I, um, even, even the taxes is that the state, um, has to collect. I mean, it's like, well, you can't magically just pull that out of the air. So anyway, yeah. it's, and, and again, the state is able to bank, yeah, you know, all yeah. the, all those taxes are going, are sitting somewhere. So it, it just, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I think um, it needs to happen. I talked to uh, Justin Lipschitz from Realistic Consulting um, just not too long ago. He was on. He's going to be on the Quick Hit, which is on Canacast 420, which is our sister. Uh, it's our cannabis platform uh, network. He was saying, you know, and I was mentioning it to him. This is not an industry that is light in regulation, you know, and it's always good to have someone that kind of help hold your hand, help guide you, you know, because I'm trying to justify consulting in cannabis and. You know, we made some good points. And um, are you doing any consulting for anybody? Yeah, we, you know, I do a lot of um, of medical con consulting. And so, you know, um, uh, I continue to work primarily with people that have um, uh, uh, significant medical and health issues. So, for instance, I was, um, somebody asked me about the, the best treatment for glaucoma for an 80 year old lady um, that has some challenges. You know, she doesn't really want to smoke. Um, she doesn't want to get too high. She wants some relief. Um, and so it's yeah. like having a, a knowledge of local products that are going to work for certain conditions has really become a huge thing, particularly in the CBD market. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's so many CBD products out there. The I mean, there's commercials is, everywhere. Can, that can confuse people. You know, there's all kinds of, they don't know the differences between this and that. It's also new. It really helps to have people like yourself around. 
Hey, we're we're eating up a little bit of time on our Friday night, but we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to continue with my Instagram interview right here on the Justin McDonald Show. We're talking to Jerry and Robbins. We'll come back. I want to get your story and what you're doing now and things that are happening uh, in your world and uh, hang out for just a few months. That's good, man. We'll be right back. much for hanging out with us on a friday night it's a little thing we do just you know it's not a long show you know it doesn't have to be a long show it you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be conan o'brien has proved you can do your show in a half an hour <laughs> thank you conan for doing that because doing yeah. those hour-long things that's sometimes eh, you know it's brutal 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 but we got uh, jeremy robbins with us and we've been talking a little bit about the cannabis industry uh and the state of the things going on there um now i want to talk about how um your story is unfolded and in what you're doing now um if you can you, you don't shy away from it you've told people yeah. all the time what happened to you and how you became an advocate for cannabis and i like what you're doing now too and i want to know a little bit more about cannabis patients pacific northwest um as well so how, how did things happen to you so uh, 21 years ago, I uh, took a little header on my mountain bike and I broke my neck and I mm. am paralyzed. And, um, you know, they um, they did a pretty good job at rehab, but they had me on um, 45 pills a day. And wow. I was just like, you know, suffering my guts and um, everything else. And honestly, it, it really wasn't doing what they thought it was going to do. A um, couple of years into my in, uh, injury, I decided that I was just going to transition off of pharmaceuticals. And um, I did that over the next two years and uh, primarily replaced them with cannabis. Um, mm. So uh, interestingly enough, I just renewed my Oregon medical card. I have had it now for 18 consecutive years. Wow. That's a pretty long time to have a card. Um I doubt that I will ever not have a card. I wish they had kind of a permanent thing. Um, so, you know, what I noticed about 10 years ago is that the things were changing dramatically um, for medical patients. I, I knew this recreational thing was creeping up on us. And so um, uh, particularly in Southwest Washington, um, access was a real issue. You know, the closest place that you could go in Washington state and find medical products was in Olympia, which is a hundred miles away. And so, um, you know, I, I started looking around for people that were kind of like-minded. Um, I met farmer Tom Lowerman and- um, Love farmer Tom. He, 
yeah, Tom yeah. Farmer Farmer Tom. Tom. Gonna have money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, uh, um, you know, he was doing some good work, um, and we started uh, going up to the different um, cannabis markets and meeting patients and just kind of getting a feel for what the industry was like. Um, you know, we we did a lot of um, a lot of lobbying too. So spent a lot of time talking to legislators, doctors. Um, and uh, the the liquor and cannabis board in yeah. Washington State, which yeah. is the group that oversees and makes all the laws, and you know some of it, it, it seemed like it was pretty successful. I think the reality though is that they saw dollar signs with, with taxes, and so um, sooner than later, all of the medical in both Oregon and Washington went away and was replaced by this recreational market. Um, that didn't that didn't diminish the need for education. Didn't diminish the need for medical patients still still have access to stuff. And so, um, about four years ago, um, uh, um, uh, a buddy of mine um, who I have now formed this group with was was teaching a course at Clark College called Cannabis and Your Health. He has a background um, in uh, he's a psychiatric nurse um, and uh, what's his name? A, his name is David Benedictus, and I, I, I've met him. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere yeah. I've met him. Probably at one of the conferences. Um, yeah. We, we, I try to drag him along and just expose him to as many people as possible. Anyway, he had me as a guest speaker and we started kind of brainstorming what we could do for medical patients. And uh, we came up with this idea for a nonprofit. And um, steadily over the last three years, we've kind of built um, on, on this notion. We started out by having... Um, uh, group meetings that actually met at my house for mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved on to a CBD only store. Um, uh, the American Shaman um, off of Andreessen here in Vancouver. Um, and yeah. up until COVID, we were still meeting there monthly. Um, the, the classes were being offered um, twice a year in the spring and the, and the fall. Um, and we finally decided to um, to really incorporate and uh, become a full fledged nonprofit, which is what's happened over the last year. Um, you can make donations to us. We have some merchandise, but the big thing that we do is we um, continue to offer these um, education and consulting um, opportunities for folks. Um, we partner with a, a, a quite a few like um, pharmacists, cannabis pharmacists. We know a couple of doctors. Um, and, you know, uh, there's a pretty decent network of folks at this point in time. I would say probably around 500. That we, I was just going to ask you how many have, people yeah. are in your group. Uh, yeah. 500, yeah. that's pretty good so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, all, all told, our, I think our email list is a, a couple of hundred. And so, um, and you, you have know, a website, the, right? You got a website. We do have a website. Yeah. It's, it's a great website, super interactive um, you can figure out how to get your med card in, in both Washington or Oregon. You can mm -hmm. find out what products are, are working for other medical patients. You can find the, gotcha. um, uh, in Washington state, they have medically endorsed dispensaries. And so if you have like a specific need, you can go to one of these places. And I was wondering about that, that in Washington, um, because I know in Oregon, you go to recreation spots, they have products there that are labeled medical you know, ones that are, have a big M on it or whatever, and they're just higher dosage. Um, in Washington, I, I wasn't aware that there was separate medical or recreational. I thought it was all under the same blanket. Well, um, yeah, what they did in response to so many medical patients um, wanting and needing more information is they have what they call a medical uh, bud tender endorsement. It's a $500 course that you take have to take a test bone. on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and then with, with that endorsement, um, you know, uh, you can talk privately to medical patients about what potential um, uses uh, cannabis might have for them. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a little different model than an organ. Um, I also find that it's a little bit easier to find products here. A lot of, um, you know, uh, the big thing is ratioed products. And so a CBD to THC ratio, um, you know, I know places that sell vape pens that are a 20 to one, a 10 to one, a five like to that. one, a two go. to one, a one to one. Sure. Um, they sell flour that's got all that stuff. So, um, 
So do you, so your organization, um, what what things do you do to actively recruit people? Is it just mainly social media, or are you out there doing events? Uh, I guess we're nobody's doing events right now, but um, so we have um, a monthly patient meetup that we do via Zoom. Um, that uh, actually actually happened um, Wednesday night. It's the last Wednesday of every month from six till seven thirty. Um, we would love to have more folks. Um, uh, come yeah. on board for that. We, we usually choose a topic. So we were talking about traumatic brain injury this last yeah. time. We had a couple of folks that um, are uh, traumatic brain injury survivors that came and talked to us about their uh, uh, cannabis use and, um, you know, just offer up a bunch of research that we, that we do um, all month long. Um, the hope is to be able to, you know, offer courses maybe um, uh, through YouTube, um, maybe a, a, a paid uh, service. We're, yeah. we're kind of at, at that transition right now. Um, the big deal um, was getting incorporated as a nonprofit. And then, in all honesty, finding a bank, man, we got rejected by two banks and finally oh. had to, yeah, finally found a... Um, uh, a, a credit union that is in Lacey, Washington, that we were able to open up an account with. But until these laws change, boy, even if, even for a non nonprofit that, you know, we don't sell anything. We <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, holy crap! It's like, yes, yeah, so, uh, banking is going to yeah. be the huge stepping stone. Like we said, we talked about that earlier. Um, banking is going to be the big one. But um, what is the website address, really quick? So if people want to go to that. It's uh, www.cannabispatientspnw.org. Okay, and we'll put um, that up on the screen so people can check that out. And then on Instagram, um, do you have an Instagram account for your organization? Absolutely. It's also uh, at Cannabis Patients PNW. Okay, C Cannabis Patients PNW. Yep, yep. Okay, great. And man, I'm so glad that we could get to catch up and we you could tell me a little yeah. bit about your group and you could share your story a little bit. We can talk about the industry. It's kind of nice. Uh, I have some freedom now, by the way, so I can back to our old selves. We, we can talk about some of the things that matter in this industry. So yes. uh, it's yeah. great to have you on. Uh, we'll have to have you on in future endeavors. And uh, as far as your teaching classes and things like that, uh, give me a call. We can help, uh, help you arrange that kind of thing. Um, Sweet. Those are some of the things we'd like to be involved in. So just let us know. Cool. We'll help you out. <laughs> cool. Cool. And, yeah. Uh, before I let you go and like, we try to ask everybody, what, what are you smoking nowadays? What are you smoking? What have you smoked on a regular basis for the last seven days? Let's say. Uh, there's a company <laughs> up here in Washington called uh, Emerald city cultivation or ECC. They mm -hmm. um, make a live resin that retails for $20 for medical patients. And I smoke a gram of that every single day. Um, I am on um, uh, Grape Ape OG today. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what else um, the, the day has in, in store for me. Gotcha. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, those are, that's my daily driver. It's the most affordable, um, you know, it's terpy. Um, nice. it's, it's, it's a, it's a nice product. So very consistent. Um, well, you know, a hundred, a hundred dollars a gram is, is nice. Uh, but the reality is I don't, I don't see a huge, um, difference in quality once, once you get over about 40 bucks. So, um, anyway, that being said, there's a lot of really nice $40 grams that are out there. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. to choose from. That's for sure. There's no lack of product let's say, no, uh, no. anyways, in the cannabis industry. Well, uh, Jeremy Robbins, thank you for hanging out with me uh, tonight, Friday night uh, on TalkCast PDX. And I hope to get to see you in person uh, sometime soon, maybe in the next few months. I hope everything works out for everybody. Uh, yeah, I get my uh, vac first vaccine on Sunday. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's going to be a while until I get that because I'm just a civilian uh, in mm -hmm. this little world. And uh, we'll see when that happens. But when it does... Get together, man. Share share yeah, some uh, stories, some good times. Get a hug in, man. I miss uh, hugging people. I don't uh, know what it is. I miss giving hugs. So, uh, <laughs> all right, brother. Well, thank you so much for hanging out, Dan. Like I tell everybody, peace. Thanks. Bye now. 
I want to thank Jeremy Robbins for joining us on the program tonight. Uh, we did an extra long My Instagram interview because I hadn't seen Jeremy in so long. We figured we'd just keep talking, have ourselves a nice conversation. It was really a, a fun time. So thank you again for joining us tonight on the Justin McDonald Show. You can check it out on TalkCastPDX.com. It's the No Politics Zone. You can also go to our website whenever you want and check out all the other great programs like Citizen Smith. Uh, of course, keep Portland Pair Up Normal. Check out Channel Weird with Clyde Lewis. We got a lot of shows coming too. We got a lot on the way. It gets the great with David Dahl. We got the list goes on. There's so many I can't even list them all. So thank you so much for hanging out again. And until next time, peace.